Hi everyone, and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'll be painting the spider roaming monster from Massive Darkness. The first thing I'm going to do is separate the spider from its base. It took a fair bit of work to get this off, and I had to switch to a box cutter in the end. Next I'm attaching the spider to the end of a stick, in this case a chopstick. It's held there with some white tack so I can easily prime it from every angle. I'm starting off with black primer and hitting the underside of the spider, spraying the spider from a 45 degree angle above as I hold the spider upside down. Once that's done, I'm going to put the spider onto a bottle cap and spray gray primer down on top of the spider from a 45 degree angle. And here you can see we have a nice two-tone prime that's going to help us later. I'm going to be using three colors for most of the spider's body, and I'm going to put all three onto my custom $5 wet palette. First, I'm adding two separate pools of Xerius Purple. Then some pure black. I switch between Abaddon Black and Dead Black. And last, some Gene Stiller Purple. Finally, I'm just mixing a little black into one of the pools of Xerius Purple. If you want your spider to have a more realistic look, then I would suggest using a dark and light brown instead of purple, and just follow the exact same steps. I'm starting off with the abdomen of the spider. I'm going to use the dark purple mix I created everywhere the spider's abdomen has been primed black. This is going to cover roughly the entire bottom half. Now while the paint is still wet, I'm going to get some of the Xerius purple and paint the top half. I'm going to start with the border of the dark purple. Then I'm just going to quickly wipe off my brush and wet blend these two colors together where they meet. You'll probably need a little more of each color just to make the transition nice and smooth, but the wet palette is going to help a lot with quickly switching colors. Now I'm going to finish painting the top of the spider's abdomen, and then repeat this process on the other side, first painting the border between our two colors, and then just more or less smudging these two colors together to make a nice transition from dark purple to light. The final color on the palette is Gene Stealer Purple, and I'm going to wet blend this into the very top of the abdomen, just to brighten it up. Next I'm going to paint the rock under the spider, and really you could start with this, since dry brushing can sometimes make a mess. I'm not too worried though, since we can easily touch up the dark purple if we have to. So for this first base coat, I'm using Mechanica Standard Grey. Once that's dry, I'm going to dry brush the rocks using a mix of 50-50 Celestra Grey and Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm going to follow that up with two more dry brushes. First I'm using Pure Celestra Grey, and then finally Longbeard Grey. For the spider's thorax, I'm going to start off with a 50-50 mix of Eshin Grey and Abaddon Black. Eventually the tips of our spider's legs are going to be black, so I'm just going to use some of this leftover paint to cover those now. The spider has a lot of ridges all over its back, so I'm going to make those stand out with a series of dry brushes. First I'm going to put a little bit of this black and grey mixture in with some Xerius Purple. For the second dry brush I'm going to use some pure Xerius Purple, and then I'm going to finish with a very light dry brush of Gene Stealer Purple.
Next, I'm going to paint the legs of the spider, and to do this, I'm going to need the four colors we had for the abdomen. If you like long paint sessions, you might still have these colors on your palette. I'm going to do a striping pattern on the legs, where they're dark between the joints and bright on the joints themselves. This is actually the opposite of what you'd see in nature, but I want the spikes on the joints to really stand out. So I'm starting out with my dark purple close to the body. About halfway to the first joint, I'm going to switch to pure Xerius purple and then wet blend these two colors where they meet. Once I'm happy with that, I'll switch to the Gene Stealer purple and cover the joint. Once again, I'm going to blend this with the Xerius purple. Then I'm just going to continue on this way down the leg, painting the next joint with Gene Stealer, then using the Xerius purple in between. In the center of where I painted the Xerius purple, I'll wet blend in a dark stripe with our black and purple mix. From the second to last joint of the leg, it's just going to be a transition from Gene Stealer all the way to black at the tip wet blending in each color in succession from lightest to darkest. Lastly, I'm going to paint all the spikes of the joints with some pure black. And here's what the spider looks like with all of his legs painted. As you can see, I left the two front appendages gray. I'm going to do something different with these. I'm going to first mix 50-50 Abaddon Black and Mechanicus Standard Gray and paint the bottom half of one of the front appendages. Then I'll paint the front half with pure grey and wet blend where the two colours meet. Finally, I'll paint the tip pure black. I'm using the same grey and black mix for most of the spider's head, but I'm going to switch to Mechanicus Standard Grey for its face, and then once again wet blend where the two colours meet. For the mandibles, I'm using pure Xerius purple, and then once again, a bad and black for the pointed tips. And that's all the base colors on the spider. Once it's dry, I'm going to use Nuln Oil over the entire miniature, except for the abdomen. You could certainly use shade on the abdomen, but I want that part to stay nice and bright, and there's still quite a bit more work to do on it. I'm also using this in the rock below the spider. It probably would have been better to do this before the dry brushing, but we can touch it up if we have to when we're doing the base. Once that's dry, I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting. I'm going to start with the face using some thinned down Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm repainting most of the face and just avoiding the deepest grooves. After that, I'll just gradually add more and more layers of paint to the edges of all the ridges on the face and any other prominent areas. I'm going to use the same color to highlight the top of the front appendages. For the next layer of highlight, I added an equal amount of Celestra Grey into my paint and a bit more water just to keep it at a thin consistency. edge highlight I'm using pure Celestra Grey. For the mandibles I'm starting by retouching the original Xerius Purple. Now 
Next, I'm using a one-to-one -one mix of Xerius Purple and Gene Stealer Purple. The only highlighting I'm doing on the legs is to brighten up the joints with the original Gene Stealer Purple. I'm still thinning my paints, however, and using multiple thin layers to avoid creating tide marks. For the eyes, I decided to go with a gemstone paint to create a contrasting reflective eye. I'm starting off by painting each of the eight eyes with Stormhost Silver. Next, I'm just going to add a small dab of Spirit Stone Red to each eye, and I really like the way the red stands out against the dark body. Next, you need to pick the markings of your most feared spider. For mine, I decided to go with the Australian Redback. I'm using Mephiston Red to paint a sort of wavy arrow on the abdomen. If you decided to go with brown for your spider's body instead of purple, red is probably still a good choice for your markings. It took about 5 to 10 minutes of slowly building up my shape and trying to keep it symmetrical to finish. The last finishing touch I'm going to add to the spider is painting all the spines on its abdomen. For this I'm using some pure Abaddon Black. Once all the paint is completely dried, I'm going to seal it all in using Army Painter's Aegis Suit, which is a semi-gloss varnish. To create the base, I'm going to start off by using some broken wall tokens that come with a Black Plague extra tile set. They give you about 14 of these things. If 14 walls have been knocked down by the Abominator, you're probably doomed anyhow, so it can't hurt to cut up one of these. You'll definitely want to position the spider before you start, just to make sure your scenery isn't interfering with any of its legs. After that, I'm just using some super glue on the broken walls and setting them in a good spot. Next, I'm going to use a combination of sterling mud and an assortment of rocks and skulls. The sterling mud acts as a really good glue, so I'm just going to embed all of my rocks and skulls directly into it. Once there's a good amount of things to look at on the ground, I'm going to spread some of the sterling mud all around one half of the base. The look I'm going for is a long neglected and collapsed part of the dungeon that something sinister has moved into. Once everything has had a good amount of time to dry, I'm going to spray the whole thing with grey primer. Now I'm going to go back to all the colors I used for the rock under the spider. I'm going to paint all of the rocks on the ground and the stone walls first with Mechanicus Standard Grey. Now, just like before, I'm going to dry brush the rocks first with a 50-50 mix of Mechanica Standard Grey and Celestra Grey. I'm following that up with some pure Celestra Grey.
and then finally a very gentle dry brushing of long beard gray. For all of the skulls, I'll be using Ushabdi Bone. Next, I'm going to use some Steel Legion Drab for the mud. When doing this, I'm trying to avoid getting any paint in the hole that the spider will attach to. I got some primer in there, but the more paint that's in there, the less effective the glue will be. Next, I'm going to paint the remainder of the floor to look like tiles using a variety of earth tones. All of them will be a mix of Mechanicus Standard Grey and some other color. I'm starting off by painting the entire floor with Mechanicus. Next, I'm going to trace out some tiles on the floor using a batten black. For some color variation, I'm going to mix in other earth tones with my gray, just enough that the stones don't all look the same color. Once you're happy with the floor tiles, it's time to shade the dirt floor. For this, I'm using Agrax Earthshade. I'm also using this on all the skulls, and I'm going to trace around all the bricks and the broken walls. Just to create a kind of transition from dirt to stone, I'm also going to splash some Agrax Earthshade a little bit past the dirt line. After giving that a few minutes to dry, it's time for some more dry brushing. First, I'm going to go back to the original color of Steel Legion Drab. I'm also going to dry brush around the dirt perimeter just to continue making the transition line. For the final dry brush on the dirt, I'm using Zandri Dust. The last color I'm using on the base is a mix of Abaddon Black and Eshin Grey to paint all around the rim. Now that the base is complete, I'm going to give it a spray of Army Painter's Matte Varnish. Now it's finally time to reunite the spider with its base. I'm using regular super glue for this, making sure to get all the white tack off the spider first. Once the spire is attached, we just need to do a little touch-up around the bottom of the rock with some sterling mud. And then just follow the same painting and dry brushing steps as before. The final step I wanted to do was to add some brush-on matte varnish to the head and thorax of the spider, being careful to avoid the eyes, and also to the rock just below the spider. And here's the finished product. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.